Hello, I'm Bob Norton, CEO of Airtight Management and creator of the CEO Bootcamp. CEO Bootcamp is brought to you by C-Level Enterprises Incorporated, where we do coaching and consulting of CEOs and entrepreneurs and act as an independent board of director or advisor. And Airtight Management is our brand about scaling companies, uh, the six systems that are modular and drop in to help companies scale once they've proven their value proposition. But this segment is about psychological principles that every CEO and entrepreneur needs to understand. Essentially, the agenda is we're going to talk about models and how they can uh, enable collaboration and enhance productivity. Uh, we're going to talk about the recency and primacy effects, which are acknowledged psychological principles. Uh, cognitive dissonance, which I think is one of the most important things to understand because we all are subject to it and suffer from it. And once you're aware of it and sensitive to it, you can almost spot it every day. Uh, the limits of the human mind uh, and, and about training, we're going to talk about the number seven, how to use metaphors in training, which we do a lot in this particular boot camp, and thinking out of the box, uh, as well as thinking about the types of memories and what you have to do to prevent your mind from getting cluttered with bad information. And we're all going to talk about Knowles' adult learning theory. And, and the reason this is uh, important is because these principles, when working against you, can kill companies. They can make you make bad strategic decisions. Uh, and as a CEO, 50% of our time is spent dealing with people, developing our staff, recruiting our staff, creating an environment and a culture that will keep the best people. So let's dig into it. All of these have literally killed companies, and we're going to go through a, a couple of mentions, or I wouldn't say case studies, but I'll point out some companies that have been killed by this. So key principles uh, that every, and I would say even manager, ideally should know, not just the CEOs and the entrepreneurs, but every good manager should be aware of these principles. So let's get into these key principles now that everyone needs to understand deeply to avoid being a victim of. Firstly, we're going to talk about the recency effect. Psychologists have found evidence that we are more likely to remember and trust information we've heard recently. Now, there are a bunch of high-level people, including U.S. presidents, that have been accused of doing this and going whichever way the most recent information that came to them was, which means they're not really weighting the importance of information. They're only thinking about what uh, they heard most recently, which would be obviously a very bad way to make decisions. On the other hand, the primacy effect suggests that things we hear in the beginning and the end, we hold higher value to for some reason. And just understanding that, you don't have to understand why it is, but understanding that it happens can help you avoid to look at it. Now, let's talk about models. And this is one of the most important principles uh, in this segment, is really talking about how models can make a huge difference in helping solve complex problems. Let's face it, companies are created to solve problems. If you don't have a big problem to solve, you probably haven't got a very good company opportunity. So it's our job to take large problems, break them down into pieces, and solve them. And yes, we're not talking about uh, Victoria's Secret models or airplane models. We're talking about models like this. This is the model uh, put, put out by ISO, the International Standards Organization, that determines all the protocols used on the Internet. And without this model, the Internet could not exist or would not exist in its current form at all today. This allowed, this eight-level model allowed people to break down the complex problems that happen globally with communications networks and build devices that talk on each level and do handshake and agreed upon protocols with various other devices. So literally the internet could not exist if we didn't have this model agreed to by everyone. Models allow us to process key information, prioritize, 
allocate or delegate pieces of a project to uh, one person, and they also allow people to work together far more productively against a future vision and essentially arrive at the same place in the future on the battlefield, if you will, to use a metaphor, um, at the right time so that the separate groups can work together and then bring pieces or modules together of a project to do a full system test and make everything work together. So very, very important to be able to break down common projects uh, into models. So what's the lesson here? The lesson, of course, is always have a model if you're building something complex that requires the collaboration of multiple people. Even two or three people need some sort of model to agree on or division of labor. And this is true in any collaborative project at all. The higher you get up for the number of people, the more critical it is to spend that time up front. We'll talk a lot about that in the product development and innovation section using the Skunk Works methodologies and high-performance teams, which allows productivity be, to be 10 times higher than it might be without those principles in force. So, quick example of this is the seven-layer model of the uh, OSI, or Open Standards uh, Organization, that certifies uh, as an independent organization so that no one company would have a competitive edge and creates the interconnectability of all of the software and the hardware on the internet today. <clears throat> Back in the 80s, when the web really began to roll out uh, and moving from the internet to the World Wide Web and the HTML standard, all of these communication standards were agreed to, and that allowed thousands of companies to start building hardware that did just little pieces of this work and had an interface connection to the other pieces of hardware. Because obviously the internet is tremendously sophisticated with thousands upon thousands of types of computers, not just computers, millions of computers obviously, but thousands of types of computers connecting in. And these seven layers is what allows individuals to work on portions of that problem, yet be completely ca compatible with everyone else's work. So software and hardware vendors could, could work together, even as competitors. So it will take this massive problem, and you know, when we built proprietary systems back in the 80s, we didn't necessarily have to use this. We could have gone direct and built everything ourselves, but that's not the core value added for a customer. You don't want to be repeating or reinventing the wheel when these communications protocols already exist. So as these came into play, it's only natural for every company to want to hop on board and use it because then more of their effort could go into their core product or hedgehog concept uh, of what the vision of the company was, what problem they were solving. Uh, additionally, it sets a standard for plug-and-play capability, right? Because once you have this standard, you can string all these pieces of equipment together uh, to accomplish the overall goal. And even though you might have uh, hardware pieces from 10 or 20 vendors, I'll bet watching this right now and this video streaming, the uh, the video stream is actually going through hundreds of pieces of equipment that are compatible only because this model exists. So let's now talk about breaking down problems because that's what models do, right? An important principle to understand is that because we live in a three-dimensional world, plus time for all you physicists, our brain is wired to think in three dimensions, and so it tends to struggle. I mean, close your eyes right now and try to think in four dimensions without thinking of a math equation. You, you probably can't do that. What about five dimensions, ten dimensions? Many business problems have ten different priority factors or dimensions, really, that need to be teased apart. 
And so a key principle here is because the human mind is generally limited to thinking in three dimensions, you need to break down nine-dimensional problems into three three-dimensional problems. And we're actually going to use that in several of the tools and examples and exercises we're going to do later in the boot camp. And I have had people say that this um, you know, is an amazing impact on them solving problems that they've never been able to solve before. Uh, we have a section on the risk landscape map that I invented, which is essentially the same concept of applying this three-dimensional limit of the human mind to problems so that we can communicate, collaborate, and think about these problems easier. So humans think in three dimensions plus time. Many businesses have 10-dimensional problems, and by breaking these down, we'll be much more able to come up with the better solutions, or hopefully the best solutions, because we can communicate to others better, solve problems easier. Uh, visualization is important, too. Uh, I've heard that as much as 80 or 85 percent of CEOs are visual thinkers, and so you want to use that strength to put things on paper, which of course is two-dimensional, but you can simulate three dimensions on a two-dimensional piece of paper to communicate with your team. And when you come down to it, the other 50% of a CEO's job and an entrepreneur's job is to communicate and synchronize the team. So we've got to be good communicators. We've got to understand the limits of the average employee that we need to communicate. Uh, two. Uh, and, and yes, managers and higher level executives may be able to communicate better and do more, but we've got to set it up so that everyone that has to understand that communications can.